Hey everyone, I just wanted to hop on here real quick and share something that really spoke to my heart this morning. I was preparing for a ladies conference that I'm speaking at next weekend, and I just love how God's word is alive and is so real and so personal. And I've been a Christian for many years. I accepted the Lord as my savior at a young age. And so um, all throughout my life, I have studied verses and scriptures and I love it when God just takes a verse that we're familiar with and just brings it to life and uses it um, to speak to us in a fresh and new way. And that's sort of what happened this morning. In Romans chapter 8, um, there were 10 truths that just came alive to me. And I want to share them with you real quick because I feel like they are life-changing. No matter what stage you are in, no matter what you're going through or where you're at in your walk with the Lord, I really believe these truths um, can speak to all of our hearts. So I'm gonna talk fast, um, so put your seatbelt on. None of us have time to watch long videos. So I'm gonna see how fast I can get through this, um, but I hope that it can be an encouragement to you like it was to me this morning. Number one, there is no condemnation, if I can say the word, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus. That's in verse one. And I love that because there's times in all of our lives where we kind of beat ourselves up. Maybe we um, remind ourselves of past mistakes or failures or maybe even struggles that we currently are facing. Um, but I'm here to tell you that that is not from the Lord. Um, the enemy knows how to discourage and defeat us and remind us of all those things. But Jesus came and shed his blood to pay for our sins so that when we come to God and we confess our sin, he tells us he is faithful um, and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when God looks down and sees us, he sees us as forgiven. He sees us as washed clean. Now, this is not to be confused with um, our conscience speaking to us and being convicted of wrongdoing because we all, we all still make mistakes and sin and need to make those right with the Lord when we do it. But I'm talking about those times when maybe we, we think, how could God ever love me? How could God forgive me? How could God use me? That is not true, and that is not from him because he tells us there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus. Number two, letting the Spirit control our thoughts and mind leads to life and peace, and that's found in verse six. And that is so true. I've shared before that um, I did my master's in counseling when I was in college, and I studied how our thoughts really do impact our behavior. It's so important that we align our thoughts with God's word because we can't trust our emotions. They come and go and constantly change. God's word is what remains constant, and that's what needs to be our gauge and what we line our thoughts up with. And I love the verse in Isaiah 26, three. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You know, I want to have peace in my life and I wanna be grounded. And we can do that by keeping our thoughts and minds um, on the Lord and on things above. Number three, the same spirit and power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives in you and me as believers. And that's in verse 11. And I love that because we have not just any kind of power, but we have that resurrection power available to each and every one of us. Um, when we grab onto that, we don't have to face life alone or do things in our own strength. We can look to God's power when we know him and he indwells us. Uh, number four, God is our father and we are his children and heirs to an incredible inheritance from him. Verses 15 through 17. And you know, this is so important because there's times where people let us down. People come and go in our lives. Sometimes we can feel abandoned, um, disappointed, disillusioned. We can feel like we don't belong but God will never um, do that with us. He tells us in his word that he is our father and we are his children and nothing will change that. And we also have an inheritance to look forward to, an inheritance of eternity with him in heaven, which goes right into the next point. The sufferings of this life are nothing compared to the glory that awaits us. And that's in verse 18. You know, life 
is hard. We go through some really difficult things. And I've shared recently, our family has faced two incredible losses in the month of May. Um, two, two people that were very dear to us that we had to say goodbye to. And I'm so thankful that that is not the end because this life is not our home. It is temporary, um, but heaven is forever. And if you look at God's word and study what heaven is all about, there's no pain, there's no suffering, um, there's no goodbyes, there's no death. Um, we are forever with Jesus and spend eternity with those that know him that, that we love and we will see them again. And I'm so thankful for that comfort and that hope that we have in him. And the next one is when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And that's in verse 26. You know, there are many times in life that I don't always know how to pray. Sometimes it has to do with decisions. God, I don't know what the perfect thing is. I need your wisdom. But sometimes in those hard moments, when we're going through pain and, and we don't know where to turn and we don't even know how to pray, God understands and he knows and his spirit intercedes. You know, I've shared before about this journey with my mom and her Alzheimer's and how hard it has been for our family. And there's been times where I didn't even know how to pray. I didn't understand why, but I'm so thankful that God understands and that he is there. And when we don't even know what to pray, his spirit intercedes with groanings that can't even be uttered. So I'm so thankful for that. And that means so much to me as I go through those kind of things in my life. The next one is all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Verse 28. You know, we've heard that verse a lot. And sometimes, I think sometimes as Christians, we can, meaning well, um, quote that verse to people who are going through something. But here's something I want to say. The hard things that we go through life, those are not good. It does not feel good to go through hardships. But here's what it means. Good can come from it. Um, the good that draws us closer to the Lord, the strength that he gives us, or even how we can take what we've learned and help other people who are going through similar things. That is the kind of good that can come from the hard things of life. But that's not to say that going through hard things is good and that it's great and it's fun. It's not. Hard things are hard and heartbreaking but good can come of it because what God can do through it. Number seven, God is for us. He gave, gave us his son. How much more could he do? What more could he do to show us how much he loves us and believes in us and wants what's best for us? So we can know in this verse 31 that God is for us. And, uh, and I love that as well. And then number nine, nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing at all. Nothing we've done, our past, our failures, nothing in the present, nothing in the future. God's love is eternal. It's unconditional. There's nothing we can do to earn it, but there's also nothing we can do to lose it. And his love is everlasting. I'm so thankful for that. And the last one is we are more than conquerors through Christ in verse 37. The key to this is through Christ. So many times I just, I'm not conquering it. It's just not happening. And the problem is often because I'm trying to do it in my own strength. But when we do it through Christ, that is when we're more than conquerors. The verse in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. He gives us that power, that strength, and, and that's how we can find um, success. And that's how we can do those hard things and we can accomplish things for his glory and his purposes. So I hope these have been an encouragement to you. I've kind of ran through them pretty fast, but I just wanted to pass them on because anytime we can encourage and lift up one another, I think that is so good. You know, when I was a kid, um, people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And for whatever reason, I would say a Christian cheerleader. I don't even know what that is. But you know, the more that I think about it, I love it because that's what I want to do. I want to cheer you on. I want to let you know that you're not alone, that God is with you. He is for you. He will help you. He will strengthen you. He will empower you. And you and I can do more than just survive and cope and exist in life. 
He wants us to have that abundant life that he talks about in John 10.10. 10. He wants us to thrive. He wants us to make a difference for him for all of eternity. And we can do that by applying these 10 things and really believing that we are more than conquerors through Christ. So I hope you have a great day and hey, let's go conquer this day for him.